There we that's go. That's five and a half hours, Jim. 55, you can get the... Uh, Jim, that's five and a half hours. You asked for it. The next episode of Grumpy Old Men Cooking. This isn't George, is he? This is my boss. This is Jim Maloney. He's on the board of directors of ICAM. And uh, he is going to uh, show us how to make an appetizer here. Later, we'll have another me part of the meal, crab cakes. Giorgio is going to come on, do some potato spuds, something else. I don't know, but let's go. Okay. What we're going to do is prosciutto-wrapped asparagus. So first of all, I've gotten some asparagus, washed it, and cleaned it up. I've got some prosciutto here that we got at our local market. You want to get the wax paper off. You also <laughs> want to let it set out for a little while. And let it really? get almost room temperature because if it's too cold, it's just going to stick and rip on you. Good prosciutto is sliced very, very thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one piece. I've had it sitting out for a little while. And there yeah, we can get it to peel off. So we're going to put it down here. I love prosciutto. And we've also got a cheese spread. This one here was... Happen to be alouette, but you could use any kind of cheese spread. A soft, like boisson. Oh, yeah, it's got to be boisson. soft. A little butter knife to spread. Okay. Sorry. You didn't wash your hands again. I know it. All right, so we're going to take some cheese now, and we're going to spread it on the inside of the prosciutto. What we're going to do is take the asparagus, and we're going to put it on an angle. And as we take it up, we just roll it over. And as we roll it, tuck it in, we roll it along, and we've got it wrapped up in there. When you go to the market, you want to try to find some individual behind the counter that knows how to uh, slice, slice prosciutto and how to wrap it. Usually, they do one layer, put another piece of wax paper, then another layer. Stand back, watch the bomb drop. Who is the number one DJ? We got a few others that were already prepared. So we're going to take these and line them up. What we're going to do is a little sprinkle of uh, olive oil. Sprinkle a little Parmigiano on here. That's it. Pop them in the oven. For so, how long? Oh, they're going to be in about maybe 20 minutes. Really? Okay. And maybe not quite that long. You want to check them at 15. And that'll, that'll soften the asparagus enough? Oh, yeah. That'll soften it up. It's just like roasting them. They're okay. really good. So. We'll come back when they're done. Okay, now that we got Jimbo out of the way, <laughs> oh, we're back to the oh. real grumpy old man here. Well, Giorgio was a little upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah we won't look no, young this time. Yeah. No, no not at all. Thing. Anyhow, uh, what are we doing here? You know, we got that kind of neat asparagus and Paul, prosciutto. I want to tell you, it's don't been you kiss so what? long. And I, get, oh, Jesus. Okay. Great. What we're doing here is kind of a uh, interesting repast, we'll say, okay? Ooh. Relatively light. We're going to have that as an appetizer. What's repast mean? That's a go. Oh, okay. And then <laughs> we're going to have, uh, Giorgio is going to do some spuds of some type, I don't know. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do later, okay? So take it away. Okay. We're going to do um, Hasselback potatoes. He was now, a quarterback for Boston College. No, he was not. He was not. Matt. Matt so Hasselback. the first thing you're going to do, we're going to do is, is make the topping for it. I'll get that all ready so that when the Hasselback potatoes are ready to go, you'll see I'll put this on. What I have is some softened butter. Salt-free? Take. You take... Butter. You're going to add salt. I'm going to add salt anyway, so it's already right, So you take butter and soften it. All right, everybody got the instructions there? And then the next thing you do is you add some olive oil to it. Carefully measure out a half a cup of this or so. All right, so we're just kind of going to cream this up and get this kind of together so that you see the goodness that's going to be on these potatoes. You can't screw this up. All right, now. Very fresh chives. True story, Paul. Many years ago, we had a uh, Carn Terrier. Nice old dog. What? And, uh, Carn Terrier. Carn? Cairn? Cairn? Terrier. We also had a little patch of uh, chive. And we found the chive was doing beautifully. It likes an acid soil. And then one day, we found out why it was so acid. 
a little Carn Terrier. Oh, oh making, that's yeah, right. but oh. we had it, now that's, we no okay. longer have right. a dog. Right. A little <laughs> bit of salt in there, a little bit of pepper. Okay, now for the Hasselback part. I'm going to step over. He actually played for BC, Matt Hasselblad. Just don't I listen to this the man. Pros, he I has can't. no idea what he's talking about. None whatsoever. Okay. So, take a potato and you cut through till only you get a just a quarter of an inch. Oh, you don't want. To. <laughs> Wouldn't you know though that the Chinese have invented a tool? called chopsticks, okay? So, you put your potato between the chopsticks. And now, as you go down, the cutting these tiny little quarter of an inch apart, see, oh, I did it again, no, I didn't. See how the chopsticks keep you from going all the way through. So the game is to cut as many of these as possible, okay? Nice little slits in there because guess what's going in there? That butter goodness is going right in there with anything else, too. You want that? Yeah. A little, little raw potato, no. okay. The Norwegians came up with a better idea. Call a wooden spoon. There's a wooden spoon. Now look at this. You place said potato in the spoon. Huh? Sometimes you surprise me look in a this. pleasant way, I will say. Huh? Look at this, well, that's an end. You don't need the end. No, 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 no. You don't need the end. Now look at this. Now this is really nice. This is. Did you make this? Or did you see this someplace? Oh, this is. I invented Hasselback potatoes back. Oh, I don't know. In the uh, early '60s. Matt Hasselback didn't play until the. Uh, so you, you keep going back to that. Okay. The, the trick to this, though, is really uh, you want to cut them up to a quarter of an inch slots. Isn't this great? It's one of the only things the Norwegians have done for us. How long is this going to go on? This, this goes on forever. I, Should I take a nap? Fortunately for you, I have prepared the rest of them. Now, there are recipes for this that you can do, and you can put things like bacon in between there. Now, the chorizo. No. The bacon, if you want to put bacon in there, lay it out on a tray and freeze it so that you can get it down in between the little cut lines. So you saw me mix up this wonderful elixir. I think I'll put a little bit more olive oil in there. Can't have too much olive oil, huh? So it's olive oil and butter, chives. You could put chopped garlic in it if you want. You can... No other spices. Salt and pepper. Does he put salt and pepper in there yet? I can't, I don't think so. Where's my little brush? Oh, here's my little brush. I have it right here. Now, what you want to do is get as much of this wonderful elixir in between. Blitzer? Elixir. Oh. Elixir. That almost sounds like a medical term. It does. Mm -hmm. It does, indeed. I had a medical procedure Friday. Really? We're not going to talk about it. Okay, good. No, no. Good. But it came out okay in the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I, was, I got one coming up. Oh, good. Yeah. No. Maybe, it's, maybe we could do a show on that. No, I don't think what so. What do you think? No, huh? no, it would no? be a, no. <laughs> no. No? No. I was going to live broadcast. Let's stop it. Stop it. I was going to live broadcast, no. but the people at Beverly Hospital, no, no sense of humor Bunch at of all. Bunch of dopes. So you, this is just any kind of a nice baking pan that you have. And you don't prepare, you don't put tin foil or spam or... No, this is, this is that spray. disposable that aluminum. No, you don't need anything on this. Aluminum one. causes uh, dementia, you know. It does. Steve? What's um, it? George. What am I doing? <laughs> I get to meet new people every day. I it's know. a beautiful That's thing. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, just enough. Can't you subcontract this out? This <laughs> seems labor intensive. So, Hasselback potatoes, you can... Do this with cheese. You can put the cheese on Actually, Parmesan I think it was the cheese 90. later. It was in the nineties. He played. I, I chose to ignore you at this point. I do know he went to Zavaria. See, there see how this cooking. goes on and on and on. It's a pretty good player. I'm trying, I'm trying to work here. Okay, so 450 degree oven, 55, 60 minutes. Wow. You actually want them a little bit crunchy. 
Okay. These will crunch up a bit, and they will fan out a little bit. Looks fancy. You saw it, really. It's, there's nothing to it. And you can augment this any way you want with any kinds of things that you want. You could really make it, it into a cholesterol pill. You could. <laughs> okay. All right. So All 450 right. degree oven as soon as the gems, delicious asparagus. Well, it's been about 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. Seems like an hour. Well, <laughs> I know. Uh, and, then, and then about two minutes on the broiler. So just a quick watch on our asparagus. Okay. All right, so that's all done. Let's take our asparagus out. Uh, oh, there it is. That so we nice can- aroma. Oh. So what we're gonna do now is get our spatula. You can pick them up. It's kind of a weenie spatula. I know what I can get you for Christmas, a big boy spatula. <laughs> oh, the big boy spatula is in the drawer. Oh boy. I'll go right over here, we'll try this one here. Very interesting, different flavors. Yeah. A rainbow of, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it's, it's. A plethora of flavor. Oh my God. <laughs> so those are all set. All right. And we'll find Chef George to check on his potatoes. Spuds. While George's potatoes are cooking. And they are. We are gonna do the piece de resistance. The what? Peace, peace. Okay. Uh, <laughs> crab cakes. Now, listen. You can make crab cakes, little small crab cakes, as an appetizer, right? Yeah. Or sure. more healthy big, size big crab honkers. cakes for big honkers for a dinner. I've chosen to sort of make them appetizer size. So now, we're going to go with Jimbo's appetizer, my appetizer, and we'll call your uh, Matt Hazelback uh, potatoes. An and did you, are these the green crabs that are out in the bay? Did yeah, they're cheap, cheap as hell. I don't know. You can buy good crab meat in most supermarkets today. This is, um, this is chicken. premium. This is chicken though, it says chicken. It tastes like crap. Oh. So we're gonna do some other stuff here before we get this, but what I like to do is to drain this, although there really isn't that much water in it. Take care of that, George. I'll take care of that. Yeah, just kind of Did break you wash your hands? So we start off with breadcrumbs, if you've watched the show before, you know that we're a little shaky on our amounts. And that's what savory cooking is about. I mean, we're not bakers where you got to no, be no. exact. You know, want so. to show that anybody can do this. Yeah. So I'm going to put in. We can do this. You can do this. The third or really half, whatever that is. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to add some vegetables. I've pre-cut them. Celery, red onion. Most recipes call for white onion. I use red onion or shallots, shallots, whatever, and red pepper, okay? So what I'm going to do, if you'll give me a moment, is go to the stove, cook these up in a combination of butter and olive oil. Ooh, butter and olive oil. Okay, I got my sous chef over there, Giorgio. Yeah. Um, heating up the um, olive oil and butter. Why do we do that? Controls the temperature. And what we're going to do is, since these are going in the crab cakes, we want them a little softened up, okay? So, I'm going to dump them in there. Sautéed onions are right up there with sautéed bacon. Woo! Can I trust you with that? I'm not going to flip it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm in the guest I kitchen. Know, know. At home, I might flip these. <laughs> oh. And I've been practicing how to do that, but I'm in a guest kitchen. I'm not going to flip right. these. I'm going to add one more fork. fork. I'm going to add one more thing. No, I'll give you no, a fork. i got a fork. No, no, no. You, you know what I like? Got a spatula. Have you ever seen these? Look a at that. Spatula. Isn't that nice? I love those. Now I'm going to add. You burned it. If you, it's a sign of a good use. Stir it around. And we're going to add a little scallions. Oh. Some call them green onions. I call them scallions. 
I gotta refer to my recipe right now. Huh? Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, well, he's futzing around with that stuff. <laughs> We're gonna add a little mayonnaise here. About a third of a cup, actually. I Is that sort of made mayonnaise, Paul. I we're gonna make mayonnaise later on in this segment. That's something that scares the devil out of people, but it's relatively easy. That's about a third of a cup, would you say, George? Yeah, okay. That's a third. It's that. Amazing right. how you did that. Now we're also gonna add some lemon juice and lemon zest. And if you remember one of our other shows. George uses a zest that uh, is actually like a rasp, um, and he uses it in his wood shop. I use a real zester. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the zest of a citrus fruit has a phenomenal yeah. taste. And Does it taste like it, it's, chicken? It's, what? Yeah, it tastes like chicken. Yeah. Uh, no, but it's stronger almost mm -hmm. than the juice of oh. the unit. So. Yeah, we definitely want the zest. You don't need a strainer for this. Just use your fingers. It catches the seeds. Now, some Old Bay seasoning. Uh, if, if you've never used this stuff is the, one of the most versatile things. Uh, you could use it in poultry. I tend burgers, to just use it. it I know, I know. I tend to just use it with seafood for some reason. But well, So there you go, a teaspoon. That's traditional. Teaspoon. Uh, two two uh, teaspoons. <laughs> two teaspoons. Oh, These yeah. are two of my favorite products, okay? Yep. Dijon or dry mustard? Coleman's. Coleman's. Now, most recipes for this, you watch those veggies. I'm watching. The, <laughs> you call for dry the mustard. Picture, don't you? So I'll go with the mainstream. Actually, when I'm cooking these at home for myself, I generally use the uh, Dijon. This is about a half a teaspoon you put in here in this, baby. Yeah, you want to be a light on that. That's good stuff. It does have some legs. Yes. As we said. It, uh... <laughs> oh, is this the secret ingredient? Sea salt. Of course, sea salt. salt. Now listen, salt, yeah. pepper. But what you want to use is um, white. white pepper, because you don't want to see the little black flecks. We're going for yeah, purity yeah. here. <laughs> All right? And why are you cooking it? One egg. Oh right? Yeah. <laughs> here, take your thank you. <laughs> I do the important thing. Yeah, I know. My sous chef has obviously screwed up, as you see, hasn't he? Oh, he's got screwed up. I think we're ready. They should be soft enough. I think dump them right in here. Here's your egg. Hang on a sec. Just look at these. Oh, look at the color. It's a riot of color. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Dump it in there. Dump man. it in. You want the front ones, too? No. We're going to add a little Worcestershire, which I love. And as you know, as long as we've been cooking for so long, this is one of the few recipes that you'll see that I don't use garlic. Oh, I, and, uh, I noticed it, that. It's just one of those things. Um, oh, and a, a, a little. It's not your strong soup. A little, a little yeah. shot of, what, of a hot sauce. Kind? You can use anything. I'm using Cholula. Ooh. which I like. I put it on my scrambled eggs. You can use sriracha. Be careful of that. It's very hot. Yep. Ditto for Tabasco. So you kind of mix this jazz up. Looking good. Yeah. And you can eat that without crap. Uh, trying to refrain yeah. from that because I, when I'm making this at home, I frequently take big gobs of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's heaven. I don't and they don't tell you this in most of the recipes. I don't like to ma mash this up, break it up. I like to use yeah, you want. The, the lump. Yeah, okay? sure. But you got to run your fingers through there, which we've already done, to see if there's any cartilage in there. Unless you want to give that Ooh, crunch. Cr cr to your mother-in-law. Now, my hands have been clean, and that's what I'm going to do. It's easier to do it with your hands. Look yeah. at that crab in there. See I that? see that. You see the proportion? Oh, it is loaded, loaded crab. with crab. Oh, the way you do that, Paul. I know. Do and you, you know some massages too? You know? I want to shake your head for No. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to do that. No, here. Here's the thing. I it's didn't want. It's a little annoying, but you have to chill this for a bit. And the reason you're doing that is it um, helps you to form the cakes. So we're going to put this away for an hour or so. 
I cheat a lot. I put it in there for about 20 minutes or something. It's more than enough. Okay? Minutes. So we'll see you, folks. We'll Is be back legal? in a bit. Be back in a bit. Hey, Charlie. Oh, what's with the dark glasses? I never seen a tuna in dark glasses. You don't see tunas with cigars every day, either. Oh, come on. What's with the shades? I'm going up to the ciphers for a look around. Like the sun hides my eyes, you know? Ooh, what's up there? A star kiss tuna scout. A star kiss tuna scout? Hey, how about if I go along? Forget it, kid. You'll never even notice yet. Oh, why not? You'd never make the weight. Besides, it ain't what you are, it's who you know that counts. You gotta have connections. You got connections? My brother-in-law. Starkist took him last month. I'm sure he put in a wait for me. Yeah, what I tell you? They sent for me. All right, cut the comedy. Sorry, Charlie. Only the best tuna get to be Starkist. Insist on Starkist. Tell him Charlie sent you. We have uh, allowed this to chill <coughs> for an hour. So here's what we're going to do. You can make them dinner size, or you can make them appetizer size. And I'm going to show Giorgio here. Yes, I'm watching. What I want. A little bit bigger than that. Ta -da. Look at that. Okay. Beautiful. You're going to put in the breadcrumbs. Yeah. Give it a little shake. Look at that. You think you can do one of those? I'll try. Uh, you can look up on the web, recipes for crab cakes, and they're going to be all over the place. You're going to see kind of two families, which is Maryland crab cakes yeah. and uh, Nolans, as we say, New Orleans. Yes. Um, some say saute, some say broil. Oh. We're going to saute these, and the reason I say that is if, if you broil them, um, you know, they're in the oven, you kind of lose track sometimes, like Giorgio almost burnt his potatoes, you know. Yeah. Um, you're getting big, you're getting big there. Um, the, 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 the reason I said Norlands is in New Orleans, um, a lot of them oh, that is big. use uh, sausage. Uh, and it's andouille, uh, which you can buy around here. What I'm going to do is, while he's messing with this, I'm going to um, fry up a little bit of Charis, sometimes known as chorizo, but let's Giorgio see, here let's see what is, this is. Wait a <laughs> Giorgio here Obviously. is Portuguese. That and looks like Charis. I think you might. Let me keep see the, the end. Pay attention. Pay let attention. Let me see the end of that. I don't want to put the wrong information. This again. Yeah, that's Charis. It's like an inexact. Shut up! It's just a make Portuguese the, hot just sausage. Just make the make the cakes. I don't like. We're both, we're both Portuguese, and we're right? both. And he doesn't know anything about the. I think we're good. We Take could be. We could be cousins. We could be. That's kind of rather scary. That's um, an awful thought. So <laughs> means we couldn't get. Married. I'm not. I'm not setting an amount. It's we sort of. Just make the freaking cakes. Okay. The, uh, right. <laughs> it's like the breadcrumbs. You 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 know you kind of judge how much you want and. Uh, what have you. And by the way, shh, don't tell either George or my cardiologist about this because yeah. this stuff is delicious, but it is like pudding. No, it is. Elmer's isn't. glue when no, you're in aorta. Look at it. <laughs> Actually, you know you the thing I'm. Uh, yeah, he's. So he, do I. He's resigned twice, but. Um, yeah. The, well, the thing is, patient. actually, I think Cherise, or the Cherise here, is. Cherise. Cherise, Cherise. actually. Sid Cherie's, I remember her. Yeah, yeah. she was anyhow, quite a they, uh, Yes, she was. And uh, better than Jenny that's another, Rogers. That's I think another she's story. Better. Yeah, anyhow, you know. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do. It is less that. fatty than linguisa. That's correct. A little hotter, but nice spice. It's very nice spice. And years ago, mm -hmm. George here told me yes, that I he did. was going to take me to a linguisa factory yeah. in Cambridge. In Cambridge. Years went by. Oh, never went And by. I said, come on, George. By the time he agreed to do it, Place was out of business. Out of business. This would be a good time, I think, to announce uh, some of our future plans. We have bought the domain on the internet, grumpyoldmencooking.com. And uh, we're dot com now. Yeah, we're not up there yet, but we've bought the domain. We're in the process of finding some clown. No, somebody to uh, 
create build the web page, yeah. build the website, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have pictures of George and I, recipes, some videos, yep. and also merchandise. Merchandise. Aprons. Grumpy old men cooking. Without photos on them? Hats. Make cooking great again. Make cooking great again. What You're color hat should the, it be? Well, right. red, blue, green. I don't know. Red. But um, yeah. in your one, the idea about the speedos. Speedos. Yeah. What Wait. size? All sizes. Only are extra large. <laughs> we'll Only see. size. We'll see if that gets by the sensor. So get me. No, you can't undercook. He paid like 30 bucks. Do you think he'll know how much, how much we use it? No, he won't know. Use it up. All right. No they just want this out. hot enough, obviously, to saute. You're going to get it, you, you know. You've seen him earlier Would in the Would you keep show. quiet? Let him, let and him. just so it's bubbling. All right. These crab cakes, even though it's been chilled, sometimes get a little tender. Oh, mm -hmm. So you certainly don't want to no, no, he's break right. them no, he's up. Right. Okay. Needs... God, that smells like fish. They do smell good, Georgie. You'll notice that they have fanned out. So what this means is you, when you go to eat them, you can put all kinds of goodness in there. You can put sour cream. You can put some cherise on top we of We have some available. We do. So we'll see that. First thing we're going to do, though, is quickly put them on the plate. And if you go quickly, you'll only you burn, burn yourself your just a little bit. Now look, it was gosh awful simple. I want you all to try this at home. You can try this at home? You can try this at home. Okay. And look, people will think you spent hours in the kitchen. Wait a minute, we did spend hours in the kitchen today, yeah. No, but the idea, the, but the cool thing was that spoon, spoon, the wooden spoon thing, so you don't, I mean, yeah, I thought that so was, you're not that going all the way through. Yeah. Well, isn't that fancy? Yes, it look is. Look at that, right. nothing to it. No, you see not you're full of them. You're not supposed to turn them. You turn them No, off. it was a check. The, it was a like check. A, it's check. like a hamburger. Check. It was a check. And the juices come to the top. You, you know, they don't have crab cakes in the Czech Republic. Do you know that? No. Why not? Good. I don't know. I'll admit something. We kind of messed up. I forgot about cooking the chorizo that we were going to put in some of the crab cakes. We did it later, but we have some chorizo left over. Not chorizo. Well, it's chorizo. Whatever. Yeah. Those crab cakes are cooking. I'm going to add the uh, covering for it. And it is remoulade sauce, regardless of what Giorgio tells you about it. It's actually a delicious sauce. Um, and it, it comes in a variety of flavors. Uh, New Orleans, like the crab cakes from New Orleans with the sausage, they will add more spice to yep. their remoulade. Yep. Um, I add some spice, but I don't like to kill it. The crab cake should speak for itself. A little oomph. Okay. Can't believe I thought of it. Just... So, what I'm going to do, hang on, I'm going to bring this back here. You start off with uh, remoulade by making, by making mayonnaise. And a lot of cooks are, are fearful of making mayonnaise. They think it's something like making a uh, souffle, you know? Yeah. And it, it really isn't that tough. Um, one egg. Here you go, George. Take care of that. A little bit of Dijon. Teaspoon. About that this much? Is a, about a teaspoon. About. A little bit of lemon again, which we're going to use. A little zest. You need zest, not the juice this time? I'm going to use both. Oh, good. They, actually, most recipes, if you look at them, they just call for juice. But as you know, I am a big zester. You. <laughs> Full of zest. You used to be a court zester, didn't you? Yeah, I was. It's all in the script here. We, right. Oh, yeah. This is a carefully scripted show. I can't show. read. I have my glasses on. I can't read them. <laughs> Somebody asked me once, who writes your material? I go, <laughs> what? Write? <laughs> oh, Rob Reiner. OK. Now, here's kind of the tricky part. You add the fat, which is olive oil, generally in a lot of recipes. I tend to find, if I use all olive oil, it's a cup I'm adding, um, it, it gives a flavor that sort of makes the sauce a little off. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's almost yeah. like a little overpowering. too olivey. So what do you do? So I mix this. This is one cup, and it is half canola. Ah. Use vegetable. Don't use peanut oil because that has a flavor too to it. Um, vegetable oil, canola oil. Yep. What have you. Okay.
thickening. It that might be mayonnaise, Paul. It. Paul, that's mayonnaise. Your hands are clean, right? Relatively. You can make it a little thicker. I could let it go a little bit more, make it thicker. But what I like to do is Very have it good. so it kind of drapes over the sauce. Little bowl here, mixing bowl, because we want to add the final ingredients. At this point, if you want to cut corners, you, you could just you use mayonnaise. commercial mayonnaise to help with it. To heck with it. Excuse me. Keynes is my favorite. <sighs> yes. Okay. Fine. How much you get paid? To, well, anyhow, going to add well, a little sea salt. Things. Remember, we didn't add sea salt. Any salt? Sea. You didn't tell me what sea that came from. By the sea, by the sea, yeah. by well, the we beautiful know where it sea. Comes from. That's and oh, yeah. white pepper again, because you don't want to have yeah, little. Yeah, you don't want specks in there. Little no. black specks. Yeah. Cornichons. Anybody out there not familiar with cornichons? They're basically uh, little sour jerkins, gherkins, yeah. uh, available in all supermarkets. Capers. You buy the smallest capers that you can, but you're going to chop them anyhow. Parsley. A little parsley. Sage, rosemary, oh. and thyme. This looks a little hokey, but I, it's actually chopped fresh tarragon Ooh. that I bought, and I didn't want to spill it yeah. when, when they we took the limo here over to the studio. Yeah. Did, you know, so know. It's very nice of the producers to provide that. It was, that it limo. was, I know. And that's it. There's your remoulade sauce, my look, version. Look at that. Uh, people will add a whole bunch of look things to this. it. They'll add onions. Um, yeah, you could put anything Garlic, in which I don't agree. And in a lot of the remoulade recipes that you'll read about, I read. they will add uh, anchovy paste. Yes. I happen to like anchovies, but it is love, yeah, one of those. Yeah, you're right on that edge. Yeah, it's like cream peas, you know. Mm. Uh, yep. So, mm -hmm. that's it. Salmon, so, you know. if you wait a minute, we'll get some of those uh, crab cakes out, and we will put a little bit of uh, oh. remoulade on there. Although, cold crab cakes actually work. <laughs> they do. Once they're cooked, you have to cook them. <laughs> they are, they are. You want to flip that over? Sure. Put all that water on it. That was good. Look at that. We're going to add back some of our old Cholula stuff, which is good. But go easy on it. Uh, if you use Sriracha, really watch it because <laughs> it comes out in fire. Yes. Um, ditto with uh, Tabasco. That gives a nice little. It gives it a little color. tint. A little tint. A little tint. A little, you know, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like that ketchupy stuff that. Oh, but, but Giorgio mine, it can does. Be done in a minute. I'm <laughs> yeah, done. <laughs> that tastes like. And people say, "Oh, this romalot sauce is delicious." <laughs> this isn't like Paul's it's a secret old family <laughs> recipe. And we'll have to do a show on recipes in three minutes or less. Us? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, it'll give us more time to talk. Well. The idle banter is what people really watch, you know. This is pretty mild, so I don't leave it to people to cover it themselves. I'm just going to lay a little on here. We haven't gone wild here, folks, with um, Supposing somebody dressing up the plate. That. Then I tell them to some... not come back. No, they, okay. they, I see it's all a part of the whole deal. It is. It's part of but the you could dress this up with sprigs of parsley or, yeah. You know, Scallions. You could put charisse actually in <laughs> the could. mixture. Yes, and they are delicious. It, it, it is. <laughs> That's another way to do it. Voila. We have this. Look at that. We have the Hasselbeck Hasselback, uh, potatoes. Sorry. Hasselback. Ah, Hasselback. And uh, Jimbo's asparagus uh, prosciutto. Yeah. Make it a dinner. It's a beautiful thing. Could be a brunch. Could yeah. be a late Sunday you could, afternoon. Because you can pick those right up. And with a glass of wine. A glass of wine. Somebody drank my wine, but we'll pretend. Look at this. Somebody drank that. You gonna give me a song? Thank you. Hey, another show. Okay. <laughs> Grumpy old men cooking, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back with something else. And drinking. What is it, 7.30? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, another drink. Jeez. We better not do this anymore like this. Okay. We're running low on paper towels. Time for Be careful. Uh, run low on wine, too, huh? <laughs> like your glass is low. <sighs> Jesus. Our, our reputation doth precede us.